Uh, Joseph Wamala is my name. I work with WHO in South Sudan. Uh, together with me at this meeting is a representative of the Honorable Minister, uh, Dr. Lul, uh, who is here with us. Um, and I'll present uh, on behalf of the ministry. Um, South Sudan has been uh, uh, in conflict for quite some time, I think since late 2013. And the outbreak started uh, soon after that, around April 2014, uh, after the crisis uh, started. Um, so between 2014 to 2017, we had nearly uh, 30,000 cases with over 600 deaths uh, reported uh, countrywide. The, the pattern is that of outbreaks that were starting in the city and then moving along the Nile as it courses northwards to, to, to Sudan. And uh, so the chart shows uh, the cases uh, over the years. The biggest number seen in uh, 20, 2017, um, up to December when we last saw the cases. So the map uh, shows the area so common to, to all those shaded areas, which are also the hotspots. Uh, lower down, far south, uh, is the county where you have the capital. And then what is common to all the other counties moving northwards, it follows actually the course of River Nile um, as it goes out to, to, to Sudan. So we, when the outbreak started in 2014, we, we had displaced populations and as part of the humanitarian planning, we had uh, solicited for cholera vaccines to target the internally displaced populations. So these were covered in time before the outbreak started. So even when the cases started in the IDP camps, we didn't have any active transmission in the IDPs. Most of the transmission was, located, was localized in the host communities. Then in 2017, when we had uh, the big outbreaks, as you see from the graph, we had support from the GTFCC, where we did uh, systematic identification of the hotspots and then embarked on uh, comprehensive cholera vaccination. And uh, up to the end of last year, we had deployed uh, up to 3.4 million doses. And uh, since then, we have not seen any confirmed cases in the whole of 2018 and this year. And uh, that is largely attributable to a combination of, of, of OCV, but also the emergency wash interventions without much uh, investment in the medium and long-term wash interventions. So in terms of uh, uh, perspectives on, on cholera control, we are looking at, uh, we have a draft national cholera control plan, which we've developed. Uh, currently with support uh, from the GTFCC, we are doing a reprofiling of our cholera transmission hotspots. We also have a WASH consultant uh, sent to us uh, with support from the GTFCC, who is helping us to finalize uh, the WASH profiling within the cholera transmission hotspots. Uh, so this exercise will help us to identify medium and long-term WASH interventions uh, in the identified cholera hotspots. Then, um, when that is done, we are looking at uh, holding a, a national stakeholder meeting to review the, the cholera control plan, validate it, and, 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 and cost it. And then we've also, this year, um, submitted um, alongside those plans uh, for developing the, the national cholera plan, we, we've submitted a request of 2.9 million doses uh, for preventive campaigns that has been approved by the, by the GTFCC. And we hope uh, this will be deployed for use uh, in the cholera transmission hotspots as laid out in the, in the National Cholera Control Plan. So in terms of the support expo expected, we, we expect the consultant currently deployed to continue supporting our wash profiling in the hotspot areas. Um, support towards uh, the review and validation and costing of the National Cholera Control Plan and eventually the endorsement uh, 
of the of the plan. Uh, some of the other areas that we need support is, uh, given the fact that we've had more than one year without cholera, and uh, it's uh, we largely work operating in a humanitarian settings. Humanitarians usually need uh, action or uh, urgent things to handle. So talking to them about cholera, which does not exist, usually takes a lot of effort. Uh, it's, it takes a lot of work. So one of the challenges uh, and support we would want help with is uh, really uh, getting the, the coordination up and running to engage all the stakeholders, the humanitarian. Uh, it's even a bigger task to involve the people in development uh, because most of the action now is, is humanitarian related. And then, of course, the other bigger part of the uh, co ch coordination challenge is uh, is getting the sectors beyond uh, Minister of Health to, um, to to take lead, as we've seen from the other countries. Uh, it really helps to get the higher levels of government to, to work on coordination. So support towards improving coordination will be much appreciated from the GTFCC. And also our laboratory capacities are still nascent. We've seen from the morning presentation some nice tools that have been uh, produced by the by the working groups would want to see this uh, brought down to the countries and then also some technical support on on using these new tools that have been developed and then eventually of course accessing uh, the vaccines that we've requested uh, thank you very much